Okay, the next author is Ki Hung Hong. Ki Hung Hong is a senior researcher at Electrical and Telecommunications Research Institute. He's working in the digital holographic research section. So please welcome Ki Hung Hong. Okay, thank you for the introduction. And my name is Ki Hung Hong. I'm from A3 Korea. And I will talk about a uh, digital holographic display with 2D and 3D convertible feature by using switchable diffusion. So this is the contents of today's talk. So I will start with a few introductory materials about issues on 3D display, especially in digital holographic display, and the necessity of 2D, 3D convertible display. And then I will cover a uh, proposed method, which is a 2D, 3D conversion based on the digital robotic display. And I will show you the experimental result for the feasibility test. And I will wrap up my presentation with the discussion of further works and conclusion. OK, 3D display can be categorized uh, into stereoscopic display, autostereoscopic display, and digital robotic display. Uh, this is only for the 3D display, which is based on the flat panel display or uh, a spatial light modulator. So as you know, stereoscopic display requires special glasses, and it is already commercially available as a 3D TV. Uh, and autostereoscopic display on the other hand, that does not require any special glasses. And multi-view or live field display may be the example of this kind of uh, technology. Both of them are based on the stereo shifts to provide a 3D image to the observers. But on the other hand, the total peak display is based on the diffraction and interference of the light. So it can uh, reconstruct a uh, full characteristic of light, which is including uh, intensity and phase information. So. And those all 3D displays has an issue on low quality of 3D images and th lack of 3D content and human factors. And unfortunately, until now, the digital display has worse, ca worse characteristics in, in those issues. So let's look more details in uh, digital display. So. Digital Olympic display generally uh, reconstructs uh, 3D images by illuminating a coherent light, which is a laser light, to a hologram, which is unloaded on the SLM. So a spatial bandwidth product is an important uh, performance measure for the holographic display. Uh, so here, the space is the size of the hologram, and the uh, bandwidth is uh, max maximum spatial frequency of the hologram, which is determined by the uh, pixel pitch. And this pixel pitch also determine, determines the diffraction angle, and diffraction angle is similar uh, to the viewing angle. So the product of these two parameters are space bandwidth product, and as you can see in this uh, equation, the pixel pitch is directly related to these two parameters. Uh, so the pixel pitch is proportional to the screen size and is inversely proportional to the diffraction angle. So it has a trade-off relationship, and so uh, both cannot be increased in, at the same time. So. One way to overcome this kind of space bandwidth product is a holographic projection configuration, which is uh, forming a viewing window by the field lens. So it converges the diffracted light of SRM into a certain positions, so the field of view of the holographic display can be enlarged without decreasing screen size. But the observable area will be limited by this equation. As I mentioned, 3D displays still have some problem uh, to have a uh, large popularity in 3D markets. So as a transition period, I think, 
the 2D, 3D compatible display can be a solution for uh, penetrating to the market. For that reason, uh, there have been several efforts to develop 2D and 3D display. So most of you may be familiar with this screenshot. This is a 2D, 3D mode selection of commercially available 3D TV or monitors. And in auto specific display field, uh, the use of additional LC layers uh, are proposed. So those kind of edge layer can change its uh, optical function of lenticular lens or parallax barrier to switch the 2D mode and 3D mode. But the 2D and 3D conversion in digital quick display has not actively researched yet. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> so, uh, so we have tried to uh, apply the 2D, 3D conversion into the digital pic display by controlling the characteristic of light source. So this slide compares uh, 2D display, LCD, and digital pic display. Both are using SLM for the light modulation, but the difference is the characteristic of light and the image uploaded on the SLM. So in the 2D display case, uh, Plain image on SLM will uh, modulate the amplitude of the scattering light, and then 2D image will be appear here. On the other end, the digital object display have to uh, have a coherent light, which is laser, for the diffraction and interference. So this, this coherent light will diffract it here and modulate the intensity of page and then 3D hologram will be appear around here. So this is the concept of our proposed method. The key idea is the use of a switchable diffuser. The switchable diffuser is an optical film that can electrically change their transparency. So it became a clear state when the, a certain voltage is applied and it turns to light scattering state when that applied voltage is disconnected. Uh, so uh, this, these two are the proposed 2D mode and 3D mode of our method. So it, both are start from a coherent light source, which is toward to the SLM. Uh, and the switchable diffuser is located in front of the SLM, so the coherent light will meet the switchable diffuser first before it modulated by the SLM. Uh, when the switchable diffuser is uh, in the light scattering state, then this coherent light source will turn to scattering light. Then this configuration is the same to the previous slide, so the plane image will be modulated the amplitude and the image will, 2D image will be appear. On the other hand, in the 3D mode, the switchable diffuser will function as a function in clear state, then it will function as a transparent film. So the current eye will still remain its, its co coherency after passing through the uh, switchable diffuser. Then also, this will be the same of the previous slide. So this current light, when the, this current light meets the hologram on the SLM, then 3D image will be appear here. In our method, the state of switchable diffusion and image on the SLM should be controlled as a pair. So a pair of switchable diffuser of clear state and image, hologram image on SLM for the 3D modes and another pair of scattering state and 2D image for 2D display mode should be synchronized. Uh, synchronized. So we synchronize each pair by the trigger signal which is generated by the personal com computer. So this is what I use for the experiment, the PSCTLC 
is used for the switchable diffuser. So it has a clear aperture of 2 inch square, and it has a switching time less than 10 milliseconds, quite fast. And in, in its clear state, the transmittance is over 83%. And in, in light scattering streets, it effectively diffuses in a whole visible region of light. So these two pictures are the clear state of those material and light scattering of those material. As you can see, this, this material can be used properly as a switchable diffuser. Uh, so we built a test bed system to test the feasibility of our proposed method. Uh, because we start from coiled light, we use the laser, which has a 660 nanometer red color. And in the filter, half a plate is used for intensity and polarization control of the light. And collimation lens with spatial filter and objective lens. And uh, addition of web optics is used uh, for uh, expand the beam size into three inch. And a field lens for holographic projection configuration and switchable diffusion. And SLM is arranged as shown in this inset figure. We use uh, amplitude modulation type LCD for the, for the SLM, and it has a, a resolution of two, 2K and pixel pitch of uh, around 46 micrometers. The holographic projective uh, configuration, as I mentioned in the, in the introduction section, is adopted in the test space system. So the, this is the SLM. So the diffracted light from the SLM is converged to the viewing window here by, this, by the lens function of this field lens. And switchable diffuser is located between these two components. And the SLM LCD has a pixelated structure. It has a undiffracted light and high order diffracted light. And those are kind of noises in the holographic display. So we place uh, iris aperture <coughs> in front of the camera to filter out those kind of noises. And in our configuration, the V window size is around 7 millimeters. Because we use a field, field lens on the system, so the lens function of that field lens should be considered during the hologram generation. So we used computer-generated hologram, and it is based on this equation. And as you can see here, the, uh, the lens function, focal length f, is in considered in the equation. And uh, these are for the virtual 3D scene, for, which is recorded in the CGH. So in that CGH, it has a two objects, which is cone and cube. Uh, and they are located 50 millimeters and 200 millimeters apart from the SLM plane. And these are the depth information and texture information of the 3D scene. OK. This depth and texture information is uh, calculated by the equation in the previous slide. And this is the calculated hologram by CGH uh, for the, to test the 3D model of our proposed method. And this is a 2D image for the 2D to test the 2D display mode. OK, this is the experimental result. Uh, here, this is for the result of 2D. As you can see, it is properly displayed. It is the same as the input image of the 2D display. And the 3D hologram also verified by these two captured image, which has different focus, different focus which is focused on cube here, and focus, uh, focused on, on cone here, and cube there. So this, this experimental result confirms the feasibility of the 2D, 3D conversion-based 
this total will be displayed and we proposed. In this talk, I only mentioned about 2D and 3D conversion, but our method can be, I think, expanded to 3D on 2D display modes, uh, which means 2D image and 3D image can be displayed as a, at the same time. This can be done by time division multiplexing. So if the 2D mode and the 3D mode can switch fast, uh, faster than a certain frequency, for example, 24 hertz, then the, the viewer think, the viewer perceive that the 2D image and 3D image displayed at the same time. So if, it, if that is implemented, then the whole, whole system can be uh, select the 2D, 3D, or 3D on 2D mode, modes uh, as described in this flowchart. Yes, in, in conclusion, uh, issues on 3D display and space vendors product problem is introduced. And for the proposed, mode, proposed method, characteristic of light source for 2D and 3D display is compared and 2D and 3D conversion based on digital epic display is proposed. So an experimental result are shown for the feasibility test and 3D on 2D image mode is discussed for further works. Thank you for your attention.